Hi, I'm Ida Adamovich and welcome to Freeze Frame, a photography series that will focus on one aspect of photography each episode. Today's show will focus on fashion and beauty photography. We'll feature Julie Nakoda photography, go behind the scenes, look at tips and tricks of the industry, take a shopping trip to Biztec Mississauga, and even involve Mohawk creative photography students. Have you ever wondered where the shooting locations are in Hamilton? Stay tuned, it's all coming up on Freeze Frame. Welcome to Freeze Frame. With fashion photography, it's a whole production from hair, makeup, and styling to designing a set. A few weeks back, we went to Julie Nakota's home studio to get a behind the scenes look into a beauty shoot. Let's take a look. First thing I have to do is find models. So, right now, what I do is uh, call modeling agencies because I'm at the level that uh, I can work with them. But in the past, uh, when I started out, I had to go on Model Mayhem, look on Facebook, ask people, f see if they have any friends that might suit the look that I'm going for. I'll contact the model, get her to take some pictures of clothing items that might suit the shoot we're going for so that I know what I can piece together to, so that I don't have to buy everything. Um, and then when she's here, we uh, we go look at inspirational photos together and uh, pick out a location, pick out what kind of hair and makeup we're going for, and then when we get together, we, we uh, start shooting. One day I might pick something really dark and edgy and editorial for a magazine, and then the next time I might pick something that's more of a beauty shot that's um, even lighting, very bright, uh, very fresh looking. Um, it keeps my creativity going, and I'm always out shopping, look, um, looking for props and items that I can make into things such as my flower backdrop that I made. Now joining me in studio is Julie Nakoda. Welcome Julie. Hi Ida. Julie is an amazing fashion and beauty photographer. Let's take a look at some of her best shots. Tell us, what's the difference between fashion and beauty photography? Um, the f fashion industry is about taking pictures of clothing and accessories, and I usually focus on like taking full shots or three-quarter shots, whereas beauty um, is more of a focus on the model's face, um, on the makeup, hair. Often I will shoot it without any clothes showing at all. So, Well, your, your photos are always very stylish. Oh, thank you. Um, where do you get your creative inspiration? Most of my inspiration comes from real life, so you know everyone has their depressing moments in life and their happy moments in life. And you know if I'm f feeling creative and I'm taking it from a, a dark place, then I might create some dark, um, deep imagery. Whereas like if I'm in my happy place, I might go out and want to shoot like in the garden. So it all depends on that. Um, I might drive past a location and then be inspired to shoot at that location. Um, I, even just a color will inspire me, or a song, or even a movie. So there's a lot of different things that I get inspired from, but most of them come from my real life. Awesome. And then, so what advice would you give someone who wants to break into the fashion industry? Advice? Um, well, first of all, it's important to do everything right in camera as much as you can first. And then I use Photoshop just to enhance or to like um, clean up a photo. So um, know your lighting and your shadow really well. Um, the other thing is I think it's really good to have a good fashion sense and if you don't get a stylist because uh, magazines are always looking for the top styles and it's very important to have a really strong passion in fashion and beauty photography because um, it's not one of those jobs that you get paid well to do. It's very hard to get a paid job in this industry. So tell us about your workshop. Well I have a new workshop coming out. It's called Botanical Beauty Fashion Workshop and it's at Whistling Gardens, Wilsonville, Ontario this July. And I'm just gonna be basically going to show everyone how I start from scratch and put everything together right till the end. Well, thank you, Julie. And I look forward to hearing about your workshop. Thank you. Coming up next, we're going to visit with Biztec Mississauga. Freeze frame! 
There are so many different lenses and tools that a photographer needs for a shoot. We stopped into Viztech Mississauga to learn what modern fashion photographers are using on location. Hi, we're here at Vistec with our photo expert, Camila. Hi. Hi, hi. So today we're talking about fashion. So what's your first suggestion for fashion photography? I am a huge fan of like contrasty black and white type of photography um, and for fashion and both even fashion and beauty type of stuff that I tend to do a lot of my work. I love shooting that kind of style. So I find that selecting a particular type of light that will suit that, that type of mood uh, is ideal. So that's the kind of stuff that I like to do. Okay, so what light would you use to make that? One thing that I love, um, I'm, I'm always on the go. Um, I'm always traveling or going on a shoot very last minute or things like that, and I love flexibility. So having something that I can carry around with me that it doesn't occupy a lot of space, it's not heavy if I am shooting alone. Uh, so one thing that I, it's huge for me is the ice light. I find that, that it does an amazing job and allows you to be quite creative with a very small package. So um, when shooting outside, would you use the ice light? Uh, you could. I think there is a lot that you can do. It can be flexible. It can work as a fill light but you can also use it as a, a main light so it really depends on the kind of look that you're going for um, my style I tend to shoot a lot um, if I'm shooting outdoors um, I shoot with you know a fill light on the side but indoors I love that just being able to do control the light on the ice light with the barn doors or even adding a filter to create a more focused light and having a very contrast um, image in the in the end yeah Awesome, so what else would you suggest for fashion? Um, I've been loving using, uh, there's this big, big umbrella called the parabolic umbrella. Um, they are usually modifiers that you can add to either a flash or a strobe. And those things are like six feet, six to seven foot tall. Um, and I had a lot of fun when I bought my own in my living room, trying to just you know see what kind of results and what kind of light I, I could do with that. And it's beautiful because it has a nice fall loft, like the light falls well in the subject. It lights quite a big room. So if you're dealing with the bigger groups or if you're doing a, a, a combined group of models for a fashion shot, it, it works quite well. So the umbrella is really big. Is a flash strong enough to fit in there? Um, it's. I would say that it's probably ideal that you use a strobe uh, in that case because first of all, the umbrella is huge. Uh, so you're going to need a big flash, like a stand, um, a heavy duty stand with a sandbag. And the flash, just the power in external flashes are probably not enough. So uh, having a, a, a strobe light and potentially something that it's triggered, uh, actually powered by a battery, an external battery battery instead of cables would be ideal for that. Thank you very much, Camila. Thank you for having me. And if you'd like to have more information, you can visit viztech.ca or check us out in the store in Viztech Mississauga. We're going to take a break, and when we return, we'll see some Mohawk College students in action. It's time for a friendly competition. Mohawk College has a creative photography still in motion diploma program and today we are going to feature two photographers who are pursuing a career in fashion photography, Jade Prentice and Patty Menendez, who are second year students. Let's learn a little bit more about each of their unique styles. I have a website right now which is just pureexistence.com and then I also have Instagram which is also pureexistence, so yeah. The name of the company would be Patty Menendez Photographer. And as far as right now, it's just an uh, Instagram account uh, at Patty Menendez. And we're just working on the website. Fashion photography is just showcasing the clothing, but rather than on a hanger, it's on a model. So I think that looks a lot better. Like creative, like telling a story, compelling certain lifestyle. Although it could be not telling a story at all and have like a crazy makeup and avant-garde um, garments that doesn't say anything, but it just looks great. Uh, a lot, like I need inspiration photos so that I can have like certain lighting. I know exactly what I want to do with my lighting, poses, everything goes into that, so. You have to 
have your brainstorming, create a concept. Creativity cannot be rushed, so sometimes it takes more time than others. And then just find makeup artists, models, and try to create connection with those, those models that you're working with. And the lighting setup, testing, all that. A lot of, a lot of things to do beforehand. Each photographer was given 30 minutes to shoot on location. They were given the opportunity to stylize the photo and then forwarded us their best image. Let's take a look at the competition. So welcome to the studio, Patty and Thank Jade. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so Patty, how did you find the competition? It was quite interesting, very interesting. This is my first time doing a competition like this, so I really liked the experience. And what did you find was the biggest challenge? Just to have 30 minutes to set up tests and shoot, that was the biggest challenge because we usually have more time to do that, so. How much time do you normally get? Uh, between two hours and three, if not more, so that was, a challenge, uh, definitely. And then how much post-processing did you do on your photo? I like to get everything on camera, but sometimes that's difficult. It was really hot on the set, so uh, the makeup was kind of melting a little bit, so I had to fix it in Photoshop and just enhance some parts here and there. Well, you did a great job. Thank you so much. And Jade, how did you find the competition? I found it quite interesting as well. Um, normally we get to meet with our models beforehand, or at least I prefer to, so it was interesting not knowing her at all and barely knowing what she looked like, and it was good, it was fun. So what was the biggest challenge? Um, again, I think the biggest challenge was not knowing the model. I usually like to give myself half an hour to meet them, talk to them beforehand, and then we're more comfortable on set when we're shooting. Awesome. Um, well, was there enough time allotted for everything? Um, normally we get a lot more time, as Patricia said, so it was definitely tricky to get everything done with setting up, shooting, and then tearing down within that half an hour, but I'd say we, we were given enough time. <laughs> Awesome, you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. And to judge our student photos, let's welcome back Julie Nakoda. Welcome, Julie. So let's take a look at Patty's photo. Overall, I really like this image. Um, I, the first thing that stands out to me is uh, the softness of it, and the lighting creates a really good three-dimensional look, uh, especially with the shadow under the chin and a little bit of light there. She's also considered a little bit of hair light and uh, the texture shows really well with some side lighting because you can see the shadow of in the fur and in the accessories. I really like the makeup, but the, only, the one thing that bothers me about this photo just a little bit is that I can't tell whether the face right here is white makeup or if it's overexposed, so just keep that in mind when you shoot stuff like that. And as far as the background, I do see like a softness up here, so it kind of creates a little bit of texture in the background, so I li really like that. Awesome, and let's take a look at Jade's photo. With this photo, uh, the first thing that I notice is like the mood stands out to me, which is something I look for often. Um, we have like a dark hair, dark makeup, dark clothing, but how that all goes together is her expression. There's not a lot of expression, which I don't normally go for, but it does work well in this photo because she also has her arms crossed and her legs crossed. It just comes off as if she's very a closed off person or introverted. Um, what I would have done is put some more light in the outfit because it is fashion photography and uh, I just want a little more separation between the boots. And the other thing that I might look at is making sure that the background kind of has the same feel as what you're trying to display. So I would have maybe thought about adding a little bit more in there for as texture lighting, so, or some shadows. Awesome, well thank you for your critique, Julie. Okay. We are going to take a break, and after the break we'll see who the winner of the shoot-off is. Freeze frame! 
Welcome back. Before we announce the winner of the shoot-off, we want to tell you about the prize. Crafted Hamilton is a cottage business in the area. The business just launched this past year by Mohawk College television grad and part-time professor Alex Coombs. Alex launched the business to promote Hamilton's industrious community through her clothing line. With every item sold, a portion of the proceeds goes to a different uh, foundation in the city of Hamilton. Let's take a look at Crafted Hamilton. The clothing line has taken off and has been selling out in stores locally, online, and in other cities. Crafted Hamilton has donated the prize for our winner today. And Julie, would you like to announce our winner? Sure. So the winner is... The winner is Jade. Yeah. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like to say something? Um, I'm really happy to be a part of the competition and thank you for having me. Thank you, Patty and Jade. Your work is was truly amazing and thank, thank you, you for your participation. Thank you. thank you so much. Here in Hamilton, we have many great locations for fashion photography. We headed over to the harbor to highlight one of the locations. Take a look. So for fashion, you're looking for any kind of texture. Yes, it's okay to add it in post, but I always say shoot as much as you can in camera. So try to find some great textured walls to photograph in front of. So good luck and happy shooting. Thank you so much for watching. This episode covered a lot of ground with respect to fashion and beauty photography. Our thanks to Vistech Mississauga, the Mohawk College Creative Photography students Patty and Jade, our judge Julie Nakota Photography, and we'd also like to thank Crafted Hamilton. This show is made possible by first-year television students. I'm Ida Adamovich, and thanks for watching.